Three Surprising Signs You Have Imposter Syndrome In this presentation, I'm going to tell you a few things about yourself. Maybe I shouldn't call my shot that hard, but given the subject matter, it's easy to be confident. The matter at hand is imposter syndrome, one of the most common psychological issues facing modern humans. Today, we're going to be looking at three symptoms of imposter syndrome that you might not know are symptoms of it. So strap in because we're about to get so psychological. 1. Overachieving This is an interesting one, but I found that it was an important sign to start with if we're going to have a conversation about imposter syndrome. It is important because while most sufferers of imposter syndrome are overachievers, most of them do not at all feel like they are overachievers. In fact, many overachievers are overachievers out of a constant fear that they are or can become underachievers. This is a pretty big disconnect. How can you be one way but think of yourself as the opposite way? Well, that is the essence of imposter syndrome. Overachieving can be a sign of imposter syndrome because by its very definition, it indicates a level of effort and sought-out success that is more than necessary. If you're doing as much as you need to do in order to survive and make yourself happy, that is one thing. But if you find that you're constantly pushing yourself to do more, to be more, to make more, then you are either suffering from imposter syndrome or vulnerable to it. 2. Down-talking yourself this one is going to come off as less of a surprise than the previous one. Because if you see someone or are someone who insults themselves, you probably know that something is wrong here. Down-talking yourself can come out in a number of ways. If you have trouble taking credit for things that you've done, this is down-talking yourself. If you accentuate your mistakes above your flashes of genius, that is also down-talking yourself. When I've talked to people that make a habit of down-talking themselves, they usually tell me that they feel obligated to do it. They say, how will I learn to not make mistakes if I don't punish myself for my mistakes? But that's not how success works. Mistakes don't become less common just because there's a punishment associated with them. They just become more stressful. 3. Not taking responsibility. Imposter syndrome is, in essence, an expression of low self-esteem. And when low self-esteem people see a bad thing, they immediately identify with it. They tell themselves, and sometimes others, yes, I am that bad thing. Conversely, they also say that they are not good things. The problem is their idea of what is good and what is bad is warped. People with imposter syndrome will say they are not overachievers because they think being an overachiever is good. They'll say they don't take responsibility because that is bad. And it is bad but not in the way a sufferer of imposter syndrome thinks it is. Failing to take responsibility means inaccurately assessing your own mistakes. What not everyone realizes, though, is that this works in two directions. You can either fail to admit that you've made a mistake, or you can treat a mistake like it is an unforgivable sin. Both are equally inaccurate. In essence, fighting your own imposter syndrome is about being kind to yourself. Be patient with your mistakes. Be reasonable about your goals, and you will slowly find it easier to appreciate what you have accomplished. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.